Welcome to yet another edition of DXB Today. Great to have your company with us throughout the evening. What a time it is here in the UAE. Things are absolutely booming in Dubai. And how much of that is down to serial entrepreneurism? Now, that's what we're tapping into today. Are you a serial entrepreneur? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you know how to find that entrepreneurial spirit? Hopefully, the next 60 minutes will help you on that journey. Let's find out what's coming up tonight. Dubai and global trade. Elaine hits up the Dubai Business Forum and brings back a bunch of advice for us. And Faris heads down to the ripe market to speak to different business owners. And Chirantan Joshi, founder of eMovers, in the studio with us to shed some light. Not only that, we have got our friends from Wi-Fi or YFY? Wi-Fi. 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 This I is hope a cool, it's Wi-Fi. Cool spelling, Tom. Get <laughs> with the times. Don't show your age. I, I am getting so <laughs> left behind with these things. I just don't know whether how to pronounce these things. But let's go for Wi-Fi. All right. Looking forward to them a little later on this evening. Wow. Uh, what a show we got in store for you. And I have a theory, team. I don't know whether you concur or not with me that I think... I think this city, mm -hmm. I think this country has a very unique entrepreneurial spirit. I think it is something... Absolutely. This is where dreams are made. This yeah. is it, isn't it? But it is the new American dream, isn't it? Like Absolutely. They used to say it's the American dream, but it's the Dubai dream. It's the Dubai dream. You come here and how many people do you bump into? They're like, I moved to Dubai a couple of years ago and I was only going to stay here for a few months and now I'm here and I'm going to spend the rest of my life here and my dreams are coming true and I've set up this business. I mean, it's definitely the case for me. I used to move every two years and I've been here for 15 years. Same You're here. keeping me forever, Dubai. Same. But the question I suppose therein, and we've got a load of guests to look forward to who will help uh, it, look into this in more detail, but the question is, is how has that been? Is it because the sun rises every morning? Is that because there's more optimism? Is it because the sort of business infrastructure that's been put into place here? Or is it because the people that come and call the UAE home, that a lot of people will move here to pursue their dreams? Well, I think a lot of it comes from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, who is very much a dreamer and makes the impossible happen. And I think there's an energy in him, there's a tone that he set. And he's proven it over and over with this city. And so, yeah, people come here and they're like, this city has been a dream that was in, you know, visioned and in Envision, what? Yeah, <laughs> like that's fine. Envi vision, vision, envision. Um, but yeah, it's, he's he's brought his vision to reality. And yeah, I think inspiring. the second thing is the age, the age of the region. You know, it's just over fifty years old. There's so much opportunity. There's so much people that have moved around in different places and lived in different places can easily spot opportunities and gaps that they could easily fill with things that they may have experienced in the UK, the US, Australia wherever it is that they're coming from. And there is so much, this region's just hungry for growth, you know, just hungry. There's a hunger in the city, there's an energy about it. And I think anyone that has a vision, a dream, a plan is welcome. Bring your plans. We will feed that hunger yes. tonight. Right, right. Absolutely. absolutely. And our co-host today actually is the perfect guest for us to have on today. He's gonna be telling us a thing or two about, you know, pursuing your dreams and your goals as an entrepreneur. Let's find out who it is. Hi everyone, I'm Hasha Montasser, founder of The Lighthouse, and I'm very excited to be your co-host today. Hashim will join us shortly, but before that, Lane went down to the Dubai Business Forum to meet the movers and shakers of the business world in Dubai. Let's check it out. Launched in 2012, the Dubai Business Forum is part of the Dubai Chamber's flagship event series. This is where you meet and greet some of the most influential figures in the business world. So let's see who we can meet and talk to about the world of business. So Shukran for taking the time to talk to us. I know it's a very big and busy event for you. Uh, your team has done an amazing job for many years. Um, how do you find this year the event is going? Uh, it's going very well. We had uh, more than 2,000 people registering and attending the event. Uh, the event is concentrating on four main verticals or themes. The first one is about FDI, globalization is the second, digital transformation, and last but not least, the emerging markets. Uh, what's interesting this year is that we're trying to merge on the latest trend when it comes to the economic uh, and business related topics under the main hall in the arena while uh, combining it with the, some of the future interesting points and the future theater. Uh, how would the AI impact our works, robotics, uh, future of work? So attending the, the Dubai Business Forum will give the attendees a chance to really 
see what's going on in the current uh, status and time, uh, present time, and then move down to the future theater and try to understand how would the world reshape in the future and how would that impact the doing business globally. We have about uh, a dozen uh, services that companies can make the most of. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a smooth and, and uh, an easy manner. And uh, in the Dubai Business Hall, we're about to launch uh, and announce uh, a new set of, of services that companies can avail, uh, make, making it up to, you know, uh, upwards of 15 services that companies can make the most of while they're getting access directly into the market in a much more expedited and a smoother way. And of course, the D33 agenda is uh, on the forecast and everyone's looking forward to the next 10 years. How do you feel that's going? Uh, we're just the beginning. Of the, this is the first year we start. We have 10 years to go. And it's a quite an ambitious uh, uh, target to double our GDP in the next 10 years. But whatever Sheikh Mohammed say, somehow it gets happen and it gets done. So there we have it. The economic landscape in Dubai is thriving. And the agenda is for the next decade for Dubai to be in the top three cities in the world for business. And with events like this, you can clearly see it's definitely online. Lane, bless you. Thanks so much indeed. But I don't think I've seen Lane so, so serious in all my life. I know, right? Huh? scrubbing up in a suit and everything, who knows, eh? Now today's guest co-host is an entrepreneur with, who co-founded his company uh, to offer homegrown food and lifestyle concepts across the country as a whole. Warm welcome to the show, the CEO of The Lighthouse, it is Hashem Montessor. Hashem, good to see you as always. Thank you. Nice, nice to, have you nice to be here, guys. Yeah, Thanks for having so me. Yeah, so excited um, to have you. Yeah, excited about mm -hmm. this because, I mean, who better to ask about that sort of if our theme tonight is entrepreneurial spirit, there we were chatting a little bit earlier on. Is there something in the water here? When oh, 100%. Come? Sure. I think you guys said it in the introduction. I think when I remember coming to Dubai 2005 and what we see today and all these homegrown concepts, not just in F&B, across mm. so many different industries, I think that's very much a Dubai thing and very, very unique. Um, but, and again, I, always, I can only sort of compare it back to, you know, I grew up in the UK we're renowned for our red tape. We're renowned for things taking a little while to get across you've the line. You've had your share of entrepreneurs. <laughs> you've, had, you've had a few. We've done all right. But it, I suppose the thing there is that, is that I was always struck by the optimism here, that can-do attitude. Is that fair? I, I think that's a leadership uh, here that's top-down, that's very much set that trend. But also remember, unlike the UK, you have here a very diverse community of people mm. that live here. Many of them come here, probably have a job, corporate job or otherwise, and then I think have a dream on the side. Mm. And I think what Dubai has done spectacularly well over the last, I would say almost 20 years now, is set the tone for those people to be able to follow their dreams. Mm. And I think you've seen as a result, an explosion of home co homegrown concepts. Mm. Now Hashem, we want to talk about you. Cause I first met Hashem when he was an investment banker. And <laughs> let's just say you were doing very well. What were you thinking giving up you know, that stable full-time job? You know, I was just telling like, Tom. Let's open a, a a gifting concept slash, you know, venue. Yeah. venue. Yeah, thank you. I was just telling Tom um, that, you know, my kids have never seen me in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> so they think I was always like that. Yeah. I mean, I spent 15 years You're in like, a suit. You're like, this is the good life yeah. now. Yeah, so, um, so well, yeah, thank what you. were you thinking? What, what? Uh, you know, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I think what it was is um, it felt right at the time. Mm -hmm. This is, um, we launched a Lighthouse 2017. So we started thinking about it 2016. And it felt that there was a gap in the market mm -hmm. for homegrown concepts mm -hmm. that are sort of a, a, a meeting place or a hub for creatives, entrepreneurs, etc. We happened to be the first, the first location was Dubai Design District. So also the location was new. And we took a chance and we created a concept that combines food, retail. You know, we started having activations, talks, etc and people gravitated towards but it. But did it feel like it was a risk at the time or did you go in being like 100% we're gonna make this work? Oh no, I mean it was a huge risk, but I think most entrepreneurs are a little naive. And I really think you need a dose of naivete. I think if you don't have it, you probably won't start it. If, you, if you're going to look at every challenge that you're going to face that would make this not work, you would never start a business. Mm -hmm. So I have seen this in general. They all have one thing in common, they're either a little bit naive or a lot naive, <laughs> so it really depends. And I think you need it to launch a business because it requires 
so much grit and so much tenacity. Mm. Mm, so two key words there. So Hashim, I am exactly where you were. You know, I'm a banker, believe it or not, don't hold it against me. But I'm not at all. <laughs> but I have been trying to pivot into entrepreneurship for what is three years now, you know, and with every hurdle, it knocks me down and I pivot again and think of a different strategy in a different way. However, the fear of losing my comfortable nine to five and what that means for my lifestyle, how do you go, and there's no one that actually talks about this. There's no one that actually says, here is a roadmap of how to pivot from being a corporate uh, or someone having a corporate job into a into entrepreneurship. So what are the kind of characteristics, if you will, you mentioned grit, you mentioned tenacity, um, that people need in order to make that pivot? Yeah, so I think that's a very good point. And I agree with you that it's not talked about enough. Mm. So I, part of when we launched the Lighthouse, uh, we also launched a podcast that actually features on the entrepreneurs from the region. Mm. And the whole point was exactly that. Not just talk about the successes, because one, once they've reached a success, we probably all know the brand. Mm -hmm. So that's different, but I wanted to tell the story of how did they get to that point. Yes. And I think that um, beyond the points you, you made in terms of being, um, in terms of it being difficult because mm. of the, the financial comfort and the routine, it's also shedding a skin, right? Mm. So you're giving up an identity. You're probably identified by peers, family, etc., as a banker in mm -hmm. your case. And all of a sudden, you're trying to shed that skin. That's very hard. Uh, you almost need a support group for that. Mm. And I think today, the good news is you have many more entrepreneurs. Yeah. And what I would say, you need to reach out. There's only so much you can do in your head before I think needing to reach out, going to people, and you'll, you'll be surprised. Anyone that went through an entrepreneurial journey will be very sympathetic to you coming up and saying, hey, I'm thinking through this. Help me think it through. Help me think about the concerns I have, et cetera, et cetera. I think a lot of it comes back as well to the fact that, you know, one of the successes of this city is it's a city you work in, isn't it? You know, a lot of people come here to yes. work. Yes. So very few people, okay, people come here to holiday as well. But when you move here, when you come to the residence, et cetera, it is to work. And that, that sort of, that culture run through it. So there is that sort of, you know, that, 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 that leap of faith yes. when the time is right to, 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 to make that jump, if you like. Yep. Definitely. Pray for me, guys. You know, <laughs> no, you, you, you'll be great. One one thing here that makes it also a little tricky is you don't have one constituency, right? Yeah. So again, it's so okay. diverse. So when you're looking at an addressable market, one of the things, it's not always easy to figure out who your addressable market is. If you live in the UK, if you live in Egypt, you live in sort of countries that are mostly homogenous, you know, your, your addressable market is likely mm. some demographic of your own country people. Mm. So I think that makes it tricky, but also very exciting because certain things hit the mark that you wouldn't expect. Mm. Just, just very quickly, just before we move on with this one though, I mean, you've seen this change, you've seen it evolve. Serial entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs trying to get into the market now, is it easier, is there a bigger, better infrastructure now, or because it's become so competitive, is it less easy? It's a very good question. I think it's easier, no question. It's certainly easier to launch mm. because of what you just said, the infrastructure, by that I mean uh, you know, the laws, yeah. uh, labor laws, yeah. you know, uh, contract law, etc., etc., has been developed. Um, it was much more difficult to launch a business 15 years ago. Yeah. Having said that, and that's exactly your second point, it is harder to stay in business because the competition is so much more. When we launched The Lighthouse, we were probably one of four or five homegrown F&B brands at the time. You know, I remember Tasha's, I remember Tom and Serge, <laughs> we all remember the main, I mean, there weren't that many. Today you have you know, tens of names um, out there. So I think the launch is easier, the staying alive is harder. Right. Well, Hatchin, we're so excited to have you on the show with us. Stay right there, because that's going to be your, <laughs> your spot for the rest of the show. Okay. But now it's time to find out who is playing on tonight's show. So let's take a look. Hey guys, we are YFY, and we're so excited to perform for you tonight. Yeah, and just what Hashim was saying as well, stay with us. Why? Because coming up in a few moments time, we'll be finding out more about how you build that ecosystem for a successful business as well. And we'll be taking a look at that one shortly. 